Okay. Hey guys, your girl Nicole here. I've been getting all of your emails about wanting to go more behind the scenes in the hair and makeup industry, learn a little bit more tea. Well, I got you this episode. We're gonna have an exclusive interview with Candace from Sensationnel, my girl that I went to college with, okay? We're gonna go behind the scenes with them and how they were at BeautyCon this year, one of the biggest makeup events. Keep watching to get more tea, how they set up their booth, more concepts, and everything you need to know about sensation out at BeautyCon. We're gonna use that. Okay. Cool. All right. So guys, we have Candace here from Sensational. Candace, can you just let them know your role and how long you've been working at Sensational? Ooh, well, mm. my role is actually digital marketing manager and I've been working with Sensational for almost two years. Oh, congrats. Okay, so let's run down BeautyCon because that's one of like the biggest beauty events of the year and how Sensational got to work at BeautyCon. So tell us about that. So actually, um, I went to BeautyCon last, last year and I decided, I was like, we have to be here. So then in the beginning of 2019, when we were planning for our marketing, I pitched out the idea and no one had heard of BeautyCon, but I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to be able to reach a new market, um, to elevate our brand and just to continue to expand just as like, uh, beyond the beauty supply store or where typically we're found. So then I reached out to BeautyCon and we were able to start working with them. That process started in December. So since mm -hmm. December, we've been planning and prepping all the way up until April for the show. Oh, wow. So what did you guys do exactly at the show? You had your own booth and did you have like your own, I had like some wigs laid out. People saw the new styles. Let us run down the booth. So we actually decided to go out with a lot of our different wigs that were mermaid inspired. And we actually developed a few, a wig line that was it's called mermaid hair. It will be dropping soon. Um, okay. But because we offer so many different product types, we really wanted to be able to kind of show what we um, offer. So we had a little product booklet of like our braiding hair, crochet hair, but then we also got the girls a chance to try on wigs who typically may not have been able to try on hair in the past because they've been afraid or they just haven't had access to it. So it actually was a really good success. And a lot of people were really excited to try on like pink and blue hair and anything that they wouldn't do before. Oh, this is amazing. And did you have any celebrities or anything or influencers come by? Who did you meet? Run that down. <laughs> um, well, we had a couple of friends who are influencers and celebrities stop by. Well, not celebrities, but influencers stop by. Um, oof. We had a couple of girls also like Paper Magazine stop by, took a photo for us. Good Morning America stopped by our booth. Refinery29 Unbothered. So we just had a lot of people just pop up and kind of show. I think Nat Geo, there was a couple girls who came by who worked for um, National Geographic. And then just a lot of, at BeautyCon, everyone's an influencer. <laughs> right. So everyone just kept stopping by and created really great content. And um, I guess for us, since we're both, I guess, um, millennials and not only that, African-Americans, we know like the big influence BeautyCon has on the world. Just tell us about like why it was important for you to get to Station L on board and, and how like big it is for hair companies to start marketing themselves to like big um, beauty events like BeautyCon. Um, pretty much it's the simple fact that in the past, typically African-American women have carried this industry, but with the rise of social media and different marketing platforms, people who might not have tried a trend are willing to try a trend when it comes to hair and hair and beauty go hand in hand. And a lot of beauty, um, makeup artists and girls who like trying on makeup or wearing makeup. They also like to wear wigs to accentuate the looks that they're doing. So being able to grab that market and be able to say, okay, you know what? This is bigger than just an everyday wear, or this is bigger than just the market that we have traditionally served. And really being able just to engage with those individuals who go there. BeautyCon is about 50,000 strong in attendees mm -hmm. in New York City. So a lot of them are Generation Zs. Um mm -hmm. 
and millennials as well as some baby boomers also pop in. So it's like you're getting everyone. There were a lot of mother daughters who tried on the hair and the mom was like, oh my gosh, I wore my hair like this when I was back in the 60s or something. And just like, okay. <laughs> there were a lot of wives who were like, I'm going to buy this for my husband and spice things up. So there were just people who wanted to try it as well as your beauty gurus who wanted to stay on trend with what's going on with what everyone's doing on Instagram. And how different was I guess beauty kind of from the trade shows normally go to, like the hair trade shows? How different was that for you? Well, I typically don't do our trade shows. We have like a different team for that. But okay. because this was a little different, everyone was a little scared. So I was able to really help um, with our design team to design a booth that we weren't focused on trying to sell our new hot items, but rather just introducing and getting more brand exposure and awareness out there. Um, so it was different in the sense that we had like a bubble machine, like they would never have a bubble machine or like LED lights that changed color, but we were able to just have fun with it and we had fun as a team and it's definitely something they want to continue in the future. And how, I mean, I just, I guess, as I've seen, like, the sensation all day, I mean, of course, you're at BeautyCon now, and you're heavy on social media. I see you on the shade room, and, and but, like, you're really targeting, um, just, like, uh, you're, you're targeting millennials. You're targeting the younger generation, reaching more to what they're on. How has, I guess, the CEO has seen, like, how great that's been for the company? So... It has been in the sense that we have customers who maybe didn't want to buy our product before or who didn't really know about it or and they're able to see us on the shade room or see us in Times Square or see us at BeautyCon and really be like, we don't know what y'all doing, but we see y'all like just like what you said, like, oh, we see y'all making moves. We're not quite sure what's going on, but we like it. And so people who are able to like start opening accounts maybe or doing different things that we wouldn't have typically done before, like we're traveling for photo shoots. We're just having fun and trying new things. So for us as a whole, we're seeing um, definitely a more positive reaction towards our brand. And that's ultimately our goal because we want to build a lasting brand. Because if we're being honest, the way business has been done in the past is not going to be what it is doing in the future. So being right. able to like just continue to evolve and, and adapt, that's really what we've been focusing on. Okay. And are you planning to do BeautyCon again next year? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of work, but they they want to they do want to continue to go. Yeah. Hey neighbors, welcome back. I hope you liked our behind the scenes with Candice and Sensational. If you want to see more behind the scenes and makeup events, hair events, make sure you subscribe, ring our bell, and also follow us on Instagram at Hey Neighbor Show and send me a DM because I would love to hear what you want to see next.